Hi and welcome to another edition of the Sales Mindset TV show. As always, I'm here with Steve Knapp. Hi everyone, hi Chris. Hey Adrian. Wow. <laughs> no, that's a newbie. <laughs> we're, we're trying to make these different, the opening of these is different as much as we can. Very good. Uh, caught, you, caught you by surprise. You did? Yeah. You did? <laughs> so this week we are talking about um, defining what makes a quality lead. And also filtering out bad ones. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by, by defining a quality lead? Uh, yeah, so is, I guess is, isn't any lead that people buy from you a, a good, a good yeah. lead in the end? But if we know, if we know that, right, that that's a good lead, because, because actually it followed, it, it really added value. It, it really followed the customer's buying journey. Um, it actually followed my sales process um, and it actually happened in the days that I normally associate with success, so the stages of the sales funnel. Um, they're all indicators that this is, this is a good lead, over and above the fact that they ended up buying. And one of the, one of the things that I see business owners looking to do once they've reached that level of realization is to try something different um, instead of instead of double downing and saying this clearly is a segment a sector a persona where my product or service adds enormous amount of value are there other channels that I can get to these prospects at before they think about, let's try something new and different. Double down on what works well. So do you think people um, try something new and different because they think something can always be better? Do you think people don't trust what they're doing correctly, even if it's bringing in sales? Well, I think it's a combination. I mean, I do think, I do think there is this desire to always do more, to always do better. Uh, but I think there is a, a tendency to not always, um, in, a, in a changing environment, think about channels that you don't know, right? So, so when, we, when we talked and we've talked about how much, what is it, 90% of a buying decision starts online, 60% of a buying decision begins online, you know, are you really working a, all of your sales leads once you've identified the right type through all of the right channels, or do you just go after one and then and then move on? So I think that's the key for me, Chris. It's about it's about it's about understanding the, your buyer's journey, understanding where your buyer might be lurking, might be hiding, and following up uh, with those there. Okay, so. Well, how do you filter in a bad lead? Is there such thing as a bad lead? <laughs> I thought, you know, if I've got a chance of a sale with anyone. Well, I mean, there, there, there are bad leads, right? There, there are leads that you know, and I'm looking directly at you, that actually, this isn't going to turn into a sale. And, but I'm still going to stick with it. And, it. and if it does turn into a sale, you know that this is going to be not a rosy relationship, right? You get that feeling that the values of you as a company, company owner, business, and the values of this buyer person doesn't quite gel. So is that, obviously you are the mindset coach, so is that a, a mindset thing where people are like, I, I need the money, I, I, this might not work, but I don't want to believe it, I want to believe I'm talking to them, they'll buy. Well, there's a, there's a perception that if I've shown some interest, that I have to now be, show some tenacity and carry it through. Well, part of the part of the the skill with a sales lead, and we have a lot of sales uh, knowledge in the group, is to put filters all the way through the process. So you're allowing your clients, if they're to, to remain in your sales funnel, as you're funneling them through your sales process, but allowing those that aren't right to leave. Yeah. So you're not investing your time and your cash in trying to pursue a lead that actually you know doesn't fit well with your offer, your values, 
And, and actually, the best thing to do is to end it there and then. So we talk about this in the blog this week, don't we? And um, one of the good ways of filtering out bad leads is to give people something that they might want. And anyone who doesn't want it, you know, is not a good lead. Like a downloadable yeah. content or, or a downloadable blog, you know. Give it to them. If, if they're interested in your product, they'll download it. If they won't, they'll move on. Well, back into that digital world that you know very well. Yes, indeed. I mean, if you're sending somewhere and saying part of the process is that you download this and we go to the next step, you will likely lose some. Yeah. So absolutely right. So uh, we're, we're about out of time today, mm -hmm. but um, a top tip from what we talked about? Well, I, I guess the top tip is to not see every suspect as a prospect. And I've said this so many times, but it's worth repeating, particularly in lead generation, not everybody is a good prospect. Allow them to leave your uh, sales funnel if they don't fit. Brilliant. Um, that is all we've got time for today. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, do put them in the comment box below. I know Steve will get back to you as soon as he can. Um, if you do want more information on this, go to the website. There's a blog on there, mm -hmm. um, the, my, the salesmindsetcoach.co.uk. Um, or dot com. Dot com. Sorry, dot com. The sales mindset coach dot com. Um, and you can also go to the group as well, which is the sales mindset group on Facebook, and you get a lot more information about this. But from here, from me and Steve, uh, thank you, and have a great day. See you all.